Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. Last episode we went ahead and created this all quote screen which uh, you know makes use of a lazy column to display a list of data. Fetching it from an API if you missed it I recommend checking it out and in today's episode we're going to talk about this little guy up here uh, this sorting component. So as we can see here we, the user can interact with it. It can click through a bunch of different sort options and our list reacts accordingly. It does also scroll with the list here um, so if you're excited, stick around, smash that like button as we get started, subscribe if you're brand new, and let's just get after it. So as we see here, we've kind of already made some changes and whatnot, but we're just simply going to go ahead and revert all of our changes here. All right, and over here on the left, I took a screenshot before it went away uh, so that we can kind of see what that UI looked like and get it back to it. So as we can see here, looks like we have uh, some something that resembles a row here. We have a little bit of our teal accent color, and then we obviously have a few different sort options here. So let's go ahead and build back the uh, sort options here. Let's just start everything below here. We can create a sealed class here called um, sort, sort order. And our sealed class is going to take in one parameter here, one argument, a display name, just so that we can have it uh, you know, for the user there. But we're gonna declare basically those three different options we had. So we have uh, an object here of, what was it, shortest. This will extend our sort order and the display name is going to be shortest. And then we'll duplicate that line a little bit. We have a few extras here. We're going to go with our longest and then also by author. And then we're just going to simply change this around. Uh, and great. So the names of these objects here do match the display names that we have here. But uh, you know, the display name here just gives you the flexibility there to kind of just change it around to whatever you want. Go ahead and just move it up there so we have a little bit more room. And then we're going to create our um, our composable here, which is going to actually handle the, uh, the that little sort component, the UI that we saw, that teal UI. So obviously we're going to take in a sort order, and then we're going to have two different callbacks that we saw for the on next and uh, on previous. And just like that, we have all the different parameters that we need. Great. Let's go ahead and start things off with that row that we have. And we're also going to assign the vertical alignment here to be, sorry, not the vertical alignment. We're going to assign the horizontal arrangement here to be the center. So we have all of our content in the middle. So let's get things started with just the text attribute here um, that comes in in the middle of that whole UI element. We're gonna then call sort order dot display name. The color associated with it is going to be our teal color. So we're gonna do modifier dot border. We'll do a one, one DP width and then a teal color. And let's also apply some padding here. So we'll make that uh, horizontal like 32 DP and our vertical, I don't know, like maybe 12 DP or something like that reformat the code so that we got it how we want it to look. And I think that might start to resemble a little bit of this element there. Let's leave that as is for now. We can kind of just leave that alone. We'll obviously need to add in the boxes and whatnot and handle the on next and on previous clicks. But we also need to actually use this sort component somewhere. So inside of our all quotes display, right, we have our lazy column. This has all of our different items inside of here. And so what we can do inside of that column is add in another item in particular. So basically a, a hard coded item, so to speak, as opposed to one of these items that come from, uh, you know, this quotes, which is the list of quotes that we kind of see in the UI. So here we can very easily add in our sort component, our sort order, we're going to have to get, uh, you know, we're gonna have to create like a current sort order. And then our on next is going to need a to do like they have it. And we're going to need the on previous to also have like a little bit of a to do. And just like that, after reformatting, we kind of have uh, you know, the code looking like this, but we need our current sort order, right? And one thing that we want to do here is we want to create a var. We're going to call it current sort order. We're going to need to use the by remember and we'll use a mutable uh, state of now we're also gonna to have to declare exactly what type that is. So we're gonna care for the sort order to be the type. And then we're going to default to a particular sort order um, because you know we kind of have to, right? We're just gonna go with shortest for simplicity. All right, and after cleaning up an important, just reformatting the code, we have our current sort order like that. 
Now what we're going to have to do is we're actually going to have to modify our quotes here, right? Because we get the list of quotes that comes from the API in whatever order, uh, you know, that we get them from the API. But we have a sort order now, so we want to actually calculate the new uh, order of the quotes based on our sort order. So we can very easily say uh, something like our sorted quotes is going to equal when our current sort order. Uh, we'll go ahead and leverage the IDE for this one to add our remaining branches. And then quite simply, we will just say quotes dot sorted by it dot author. And then our longest, we can say quotes dot sorted by it dot display text dot length. And then I believe in this case, we need to call reversed because this is going to be the uh, solution for the shortest, right? Because it's gonna, sh it's gonna sort things by length going from you know, zero, one, two, three, et cetera. And so longest is going to be basically sort it the shortest and then just reverse it, right? Perfect. Now we have a sorted quotes array here and we simply just paste that in instead of using the quotes sent into the function. And now we have our items sorted as we would expect. So considering we're defaulting to shortest, we have everything else that we need here. If we actually go ahead and rerun this, I think we might see a little bit of something working. Flipping over to the all quotes screen here, we do see shortest. We don't have the same looking UI, right? We have this UI over here, but it is starting to come together very, very quickly. And last bit here, we can see that these, the shortest is actually working, right? Like we do see that this quote is shorter than this one, and then this one, and then this one, and this one. So we are sorting things effectively. If we go all the way to the bottom of the list, we have the longest quote down there. So we know our logic, at least for the sort, shortest, is sound. Everything else looks good to me. So now it's really just a UI exercise to get things to where we want them to be. If you're enjoying the video so far, please smash that like button, comment down below how this app's turning out. And um, yeah, let's just continue on here. So we just have our text here. We have just a simple border. We have then the padding. Um, so I think actually we should, inside of our border here, we can actually get a little bit uh, more intelligent. So we'll have this say width and then color. And then here we can apply a shape and we're gonna do the material theme shapes.large. All right, so let's start making the uh, little arrows along the side there for the user to interact with. Uh, we're gonna have a modifier here. We're gonna have a box here and then we're going to use a modifier uh, on that box. We're actually gonna basically copy this exact same thing, right? Because we're just gonna uh, want the same border functionality and whatnot that we have on the text. Um, let's just go ahead and run it and see how that looks to see exactly what we need to modify, right? We see this screenshot over here, it obviously looks pretty nice. Let's see what we have over here. Okay, so we don't even have a box. I think what might be happening here is that it is just overlapping on one another. So we're going to create a modifier here on the row to say uh, fill max width to tell the row to take up the entire size. Flipping over to the all quotes screen, okay, we're in the middle, but we don't actually see that box. Probably because we don't actually have a size set to it. So let's just see here if we set it to something specific like 30 dp. If we go ahead and rerun things here, we should see a box now. I hope we see a box. Yeah, okay, there we go. So we do see a box now. We didn't have a size associated with it. There was nothing inside the box, so it didn't actually calculate a size. Makes a lot of sense, right? Uh, but we see a few issues here. One, it's not centered the way that we want it within the row. And then two, it's obviously not the right size. So a couple tricks here to uh, kind of align things the way that we want and get it to where we want. And just reformat this code. This we can actually make use, I don't know why it doesn't come up always, but we're going to have our vertical alignment in here. I don't know why it's not coming up. It's going to be alignment.center vertically. Yep, uh, IDE was not helping us out there. And then one other thing we're gonna assign here on the, um, the height here is we're going to say intrinsic size dot min. And what that's going to do is it's gonna create this row basically like wrap content, right? So the height of the row, it, we're telling it to fill up the whole width and then the height of the row is going to be wrap content. So this is very much similar to like match parent and wrap content. Uh, and then basically the elements inside of this box uh, or row, excuse me, are going to explain to uh, you know the, the framework how big this row should actually be. So that's super powerful because we say fill max height 
what that's going to do here, and let's just simply put a, uh, a width of 20 dp so that we have some width to it, that's actually going to just make this box fill up the entire uh, row, which is mainly filled, uh, or sorry, mainly declared by how big this text element is, right? Whatever the largest element is inside of this row is going to kind of tell it how long, how high it is. So here we can simply tell the box to fill the max height. It doesn't fill the whole screen. It just fills all of the height that's available inside of the row. Instead of our width being 20 dp here, because you can see on the side, um, you know, it, it, it clearly has 20 dp, we can instead use something called the aspect ratio here and set it equal to one. And what that'll do is it will fill the width to be exactly the same amount as the height, creating a perfect square for us as we see there, right? And that's kind of the screen that we're looking for here. This is a perfect square, just has a little bit extra padding here. So let's go ahead and apply some padding. Let's get an icon in there and let's just make uh, this box kind of come together. So first things first, for the, um, for the icon there, we can use the icon. I don't think it is a painter called the image vector because we're going to use icons.rounded.arrow back in this case. And then we're going to just say back for the content. Um, I believe we can apply a tint here. So we're gonna apply the teal and then we're going to have a modifier. Let me just reformat this code onto the actual box here. And then we're going to have to call on previous here because this is the box to the left, right? So now the box, the overall like parent to this icon is going to be clickable. Um, I think we're also going to need to clip something along the way, but we'll do that in a second. We'll see what it looks like for now. And so as we can see here, there's a few issues. One, the arrow is not centered. Uh, two, if you see that little click region, it does kind of bleed outside of the bounds of the, uh, the border there. Um, so we're gonna clean both of those up very easily. Uh, inside of the icon here, we're going to apply a modifier.align. We're just gonna align it to the center. That's very straightforward. That'll take care of the arrow problem. And then before our clickable attribute, we're going to wanna clip things to the exact same shape as the, um, the border that we've applied so that it just appears like they can only, you know, it appears like that is the whole view as opposed to the whole, you know, raw square. Um, the other bit here that I want to do is I think after we fill max height and aspect ratio, we can set our padding. So our vertical, uh, let's just say all equals 8 dp, and that will push, um, you know, that, uh, that icon away from everything else. Okay, so we have it in the middle. We have a click region issue. We just need to move the padding above the fill max height. Uh, and the aspect ratio, honestly, it might need to go up one more. Let's just set it as the very first thing to kind of move it all in. And with that movement of the padding a little bit higher up, we do now have the click region being exactly what we would want. Alrighty, that's maybe a little bit too tall. Um, so yeah, we could say horizontal is gonna be eight, but then our vertical, let's just leave it at maybe two DP or something like that. Right. And if we rerun it, we do see it is a little bit better. Instead of two, we're gonna put it at four and then we're in pretty good shape here. Uh, one other thing that I wanna do for our text here to get it to align is going to say sort order colon and then we're going to put that inside of there, string interpolate the information. And I do believe we have this box in a very good point where now we're just gonna copy that, paste it after our text I think the only thing we need to modify here is the on next and uh, we'll do arrow forward. We'll change this to say forward. And once we rerun it, we should see something pretty similar to this. Sweet. I mean, that, that, looks, that looks pretty damn good to me. The click region's perfect. This thing scrolls off uh, the screen as we need to. The only thing is these buttons are not, um, not doing anything. So let's go ahead and clean that up. They are being called though, right? We are calling the on next and the on previous inside of this component. We, where is it? we just need to implement these two functions down here to actually assign sort order the new, uh, the, the current sort order variable, the new sort order after the user clicks on things. So uh, let's go ahead and 
close that. We're going to go up here on our sealed class. We're just going to create these two functions. So we're going to call, uh, we're going to create one called get next. This is going to return a sort order. And quite simply here, we can, no, I'm not going to remember. We're going to return uh, when this is shortest, then the next one is going to be longest, right? And then when this is longest, the next one is going to be author. And then when this is author, the next one is going to be shortest. So we kind of get that like, you know, looping effect to go around, you know, that array, so to speak. We're going to have to do something similar for the previous. So we're just going to rename this to get previous. When it's shortest, we're going to want to put in the author. When it's longest, we're going to want to put in shortest. And then when it's author, yeah, we're going to want to just apply longest, right? <laughs> just taking a tiny bit for me to recognize what the pattern is. But we have these functions now here, which are super helpful because in our on next, we can simply just say current sort order equals current sort order dot get next. And similarly for the previous uh, callback, we can simply just call get previous here. And that will update this variable because we're using it in the remember here, right? That's not going to be, um, you know, blown away when we kind of recompose and whatnot. But there is other elements, so there, there are other elements that need this current sort order. So now our, our list is going to react because the sorted quotes is going to be different because our current sort order has changed. And then that will just go ahead and put it into the items uh, array in our lazy column. And then everything should kind of update. So we have shortest here. Now we have our longest. And now we have author. Yeah. And if we go backwards here, we can just go backwards. We can go all the way around. We can basically just create as many sort orders as we want here. We just add them into this sealed class here. Uh, we update these functions to react appropriately. And then we just have to handle how we actually want to sort them. So you could you know, extend this however you want, come up with whatever wacky um, you know, ordering system you want to do. And yeah, it's pretty, pretty flexible. Stick around for a little bit of extra credit. We're going to get this list to actually animate. But uh, this was basically all that we needed to, to cover here. So thank you so much if you made it this far. Smash that like button if you enjoyed it or learned something. Subscribe if you're brand new. And otherwise, let's just continue on here to actually create the animated bit here. So in later versions of, um, of Compose, we can actually uh, apply something on a modifier here to uh, tell it to basically animate its, its point. So we're just going to add in a modifier uh, to this single list item and sorry, telling it to modify or to, to animate when it is added or changed in the list here. Um, so because we are inside of a lazy column, what is convenient here is we can actually create a modifier and have that say animate item placement. Now it will give you a little bit of a warning here because at the time of recording, we are needing to opt in. You very easily just hover over it, click it, or just put in the experimental foundational API uh, opt-in annotation. And that is about it. Let's go ahead and rerun this here and we should see our list uh, animate. And as we click around here, we'll see it's animating quite nicely. Um, I mean, nicely is relative, right? If you like the animation, great. If you don't, um, then you can always remove it. But it does kind of make the app feel a little bit more, you know, intelligent or professional, in my opinion. It makes it feel, uh, you know, a little bit nicer to the user. However, you can get yourself in some wacky states here if you kind of scroll. Yeah, now you're like in the middle of the list because it followed where this uh, element was. And now we're in the middle of the list, which is... Uh, again, probably why it's in the experimental <laughs> case. We want to figure that out. But uh, nevertheless, here we kind of cleaned up our sort component here. Hope you learned something. Uh, hope this was interesting for you. Feel free to pull down the code. It is on GitHub. Uh, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.